in the Bible of Ezekiel 7, we read a message totally from God to any nation whom these things are applicable towards. Just get a load of this. America, Ireland, anybody that has been once in love with the Lord and totally followed his commandments and worshipped him with honor and praise and then gone the opposite way as in the many colleges in the USA like Yale and Princeton and the cities like New York City and Washington DC and various places. This is what God is thinking because this word, the word of God, eternal, full of power, see Hebrews 4.12, is written and history repeats itself therefore it's totally well known that it is well applicable today it's relevant and this is what he has to say moreover the word of the lord came to me saying and you said a man thus says the lord god to the land of israel this was back during the kingdom of israel of course when they were falling as a nation due to their wickedness an end the end has come upon the four corners of the land. Now the end has come upon you, and I will send my anger against you. I will judge you according to your ways, and I will repay you for all your abominations. I will not spare you, nor will I have pity, but I will repay your ways, and your abominations will be in your midst. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, A disaster, a singular disaster. Behold, it has come. An end has come. The end has come. It is dawn for you. Behold, it has come. Doom has come upon you. You who dwell in the land, the time has come. A day of trouble is near, not of rejoicing in the mountains. No, upon you I will soon pour out my fury and send my anger upon you. I will judge you according to your ways, and I will repay you for all your abominations. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. I will repay you according to your ways, and your abominations will be in your midst. Then you shall know that I am the Lord who strikes. Behold the day, behold it has come, doom has gone out, the rod has blossomed, pride has budded. Violence has risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, none of their multitude, none of them, nor shall there be wailing for them. The time has come, the day draws near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is on their whole multitude. For the seller shall not return to what has been sold. Though we may still be alive, for the vision concerns the whole multitude, and it shall not turn back, no one will strengthen himself who lives in iniquity. They have blown the trumpet and made everyone ready, but no one goes to battle. For my wrath is on all their multitude. The sword is outside, the pestilence and famine within. Whoever is in the field will die by the sword, and whoever is in the city, famine and pestilence will devour him. Now you may be asking, what in the world is this about? But have we not seen... War globally, disease infesting our nation, such as the famous Yosemite Park. I mean, that's just one example of a biblical plague, they call it, in the news that's broken out. And what's in Yosemite area? All oh, the wickedness of nearby San Francisco and California. Pride has budded, as the Bible says. And what is the most famous, evil, colorful scheme going on right now? Only that of pride. How about famine? Could it be interpreted as drought? How about recession? These judgments are not God's pleasure, as he stated in the Bible, but he must uphold his law, because if he weren't just, who would respect him? And can you agree? I mean, justice has got to be part of any kingdom, and he, being perfect, knows exactly how to do it with mercy and grace. He, he waits till the last possible moment. He stretches it like a balloon. And then, once it's efficient to the most, he breaks down and clears out the junk when it's totally unusable anymore. But at the moment of repentance, he totally would flip around. Just one repentance in a group of people. And he'll change his mind because why destroy a repentant person? But those who don't repent, well, they've just got to be punished. Those who survive will escape and be on the mountains, like doves on the valleys, and all of them mourning, each for his iniquity. Every hand will be feeble, and every knee will be as weak as water. They will also be girded with sackcloth. Horror will cover them, shame will be on every face, baldness on all their heads. They will throw their silver into the streets, and their gold will be like refuse. Their silver and their gold will not be able to deliver them. 
In the day of the wrath of the Lord they will not satisfy their souls, nor fill their stomachs, because it became their stumbling block of iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornaments, he set it in majesty, but they made from it the images of their abominations, their detestable things. Therefore I have made it like refuse to them, and I will give it as plunder into the hands of strangers, and into the wicked of the earth as spoil, and they shall defile it. I will turn my face from them, and they will defile my secret place, for robbers shall enter it and defile it. He turns what was once a blessing into judgment, because it's very effective. Have we not been majorly blessed in food and prosperity of wealth and all kinds of richness? And what have we done? We've kicked him out. We've slapped his face, basically. We've we've spit on it. We've thrown his stuff away. We don't care as a nation about anything but violence and filth. Make a chain, for the land is filled with crimes of blood, and the city is full of violence. Therefore I will bring the worst of the Gentiles, and they will possess their houses. I will cause the pomp of the strong to cease and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction comes. They will seek peace, but there shall be none. Disaster will come upon disaster, and rumor will be upon rumor. Then they will seek a vision from a prophet, but the law will perish from the priest and counsel from the elders. The king will mourn, the prince will be clothed in desolation, and the hands of the common people will tremble. I will do to them according to their way, and according to what they deserve, I will judge them. They then shall know that I am the Lord." In addition to these, we have one more part that shows it's definitely for all nations. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when a land sins against me by persistent unfaithfulness, I will stretch out my hand against it. I will cut off its supply of bread, send famine on it, and cut off man and beast from it. Even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they would deliver only themselves by their righteousness, says the Lord God. If I cause wild beasts to pass through the land, and they empty it, and make it as desolate so no man may pass through because of the beasts, even though these three men were in it as I live, says the Lord God, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters, only they would be delivered, and the land would be desolate. Or if I bring a sword on that land, and say, Sword, go through the land, and I cut off man and beast from it, even though these three men were in it as I live, says the Lord God, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters, but only they themselves would be delivered. Or if I send pestilence into that land and pour out my fury on it in blood and cut off from it man and beast, even though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, says the Lord God, they would deliver neither son nor daughter. They would deliver only themselves by their righteousness. For thus says the Lord God, how much more will it, shall it be when I send my four severe judgments on Jerusalem, the sword and famine and wild beasts and pestilence, to cut off man and beast from it? Yet, behold, there shall be left in it a remnant, who will be brought out, both sons and daughters. Surely they will come out to you, and you will see their ways and their doings. Then you will be comforted concerning the disaster that I have brought upon Jerusalem, all that I have brought upon it. And they will comfort you when you see their ways and their doings. And you shall know that I have done nothing without cause, that I have done it in, says the Lord God. This, of course, was during the destruction of Jerusalem, around 586 B.C. But it also refers to any nation, as he says, any land continues in persistent unfaithfulness, and only those who have righteousness will be saved. Now, how do you attain righteousness and all these horrible judgments on wickedness? How do you escape? Well, the Bible says very clearly it's what it's all about. He wants to save you. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but is not willing that any should perish. Not willing but that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Second Peter 3, 9. In Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10 But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But you've got to accept it. You've got to claim it. You've got to ask for it. Just simply in prayer. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God has raised him from the de dead, you will be saved. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. The references for these are Romans 5, 8, Romans 6, 23, John 3, 16, Romans 10, 9, and Hebrews 13, 5. And if you do that, you'll be in heaven 
ever.